Hello and welcome back to the Milan Talk podcast. I'm your host, Samit Paul. First and foremost, apologies for the extended break over the summer and last season. The podcast is back. There'll be regular previews, reviews and general podcasts throughout the season. Uh, Hello to those who are still with me and a big hello to those who are listening for the first time. Welcome aboard. Uh, This being the season preview podcast, there's a lot to get through today. We'll be talking Gianpaolo, summer signings, pre-season form, possible starting lineup versus Udinese, and we'll be running through polls, comments, and your questions on Twitter. So getting straight into it, and the beginning of the summer, came with a lot of change. Gattuso, out. Leonardo, out. Maldini got bumped up into a more senior position. Boban returned. Massara arrived. And perhaps most importantly of all, Marco Gianpaolo was appointed uh, Gattuso's successor. A lot of excitement and a lot of question marks. The excitement comes with the style of play that we expect him to bring based on what we've seen at Sampdoria and Empoli. Uh, and of course, the preferred 4-3-1-2 system that he's adopted at both of those clubs. Um, the style of play on and off the ball, there's a lot of high pressing, there's a lot of energy intensity. And of course, there's a lot of excitement around the attractiveness and the attacking football that we're expected to play under him. Uh, the question marks, of course, come with his track record. He hasn't got a track record of winning trophies, for example, or breaking into that top six group with those clubs that he's been at. However, this is, of course, a completely different kettle of fish um, where he's, he's going to have to step up and meet expectations. The pressure will be on. I think he needs time, first and foremost. That's going to be an important factor of having patience, both with the fans and the hierarchy, because I'm not quite sure that things are going to click into place immediately. But there's a lot to be excited about. There's a lot to look forward to. Uh, and hopefully now Gian Paolo is the man to not only deliver results, but also to implement a really, really attractive and a- attacking style of play which is something that we've lacked uh, over the recent years I do feel as though particularly with the signings that we've made thus far there's more of an identity and a direction in which the whole club is moving I think Jean Paolo is obviously set in stone the 4-3-1-2 system we're buying players to fit that system and players that specifically have the attributes to fit into the style of play that he wants to put in place and that like I said earlier it's intensity and urgency to press high off the ball uh, and also to have the technical quality and the creativity in possession to um, to have great players across the whole pitch uh, to create chances so a lot to be happy about but obviously time will tell and uh, the results will be what matter. Looking closely at the summer signings uh, I'm really impressed with two in particular I think Ishmael Benacer is going to be a great great signing I'm not going to profess to say that I watched a lot of him at Empoli last season, but there were certain performances where you, he did stand out naturally. Uh, and also, obviously, after the announcement was made, or rather the interest that we had in him, uh, there were a couple of games in the African Cup of Nations that I watched and had a good look at him. Uh, and you can see exactly why Gianpaolo was so keen to sign him. Like I said, it comes back to the same thing. It's the intensity and urgency off the ball. His pressing and energy is unbelievable in the midfield, and that's going to be crucial as the sort of engine of our team. Um, but also he's got the quality, the vision, the passing range, find players between the lines, uh, and also get us ticking. Something that Biglia probably is quite limited at, and Bakayoko was last season. I think Benacer can add the sort of tenacity and energy that they provided, but then also add a bit more quality on the ball to go with it. So he's going to be absolutely crucial in the middle of the team. I think Theo Hernandez, even though he got injured within 40 minutes of his debut in pre-season, in that 40 minutes alone, he showed so many positive signs. Uh, I don't feel as though it's much of a secret that I don't particularly rate Ricardo Rodriguez. I think he's a solid player, 6 out of 10 every week. But for me, there are limitations to his game that we saw last season. And I'm not quite sure why, because we saw a lot of him in an attacking sense uh, at his previous club and with Switzerland. But we just haven't seen that at Milan. I think Hernandez will offer more energy on the left flank and I think he's got more about him going forward to add real width and to kind of add another dimension to our attack. So those two, I would say, stand out for me in particular. Rafael Leao, a lot has been said about him. He's got a lot of potential, a lot of talent. Whether or not he can now make that step up to at Milan and kind of showcase that on a consistent basis remains to be seen. I think he's absolutely crucial in that he brings pace and movement to the team. Uh, and hopefully he'll form a dangerous partnership with Piontek up front. Again, like I said, question mark still over whether or not he's going to be able to deliver consistently. Uh, we saw flashes of him in pre-season against Ferran Kelly uh, when he got an assist, and he did look good. He can run the channels, he can spread the defence, create pockets of space for others as well, which is going to be important. 
Um, so there, there are positive signs there for me, but again, though that, that, that kind of signing for me is going to have to be judged over time and seeing what he brings to the team. Rade Krunic brings quality and depth for me. I think he is going to be... He's going to find it quite difficult to break into the starting eleven. I think he is has been signed as depth, but he will get chances, I'm sure. Uh, and hopefully, you know, he kind of proves that he can also make the step up and deliver for Milan. Uh, but we'll have to wait and see. Of course, the latest signing was Lea Duarte. Um, again, similarly to Rodriguez, for me, I don't think it's much of a secret that I don't rate Musacchio very well or very highly. Um, is Leo Duarte going to displace him in the starting eleven? I don't think so, Not especially not opening weekend of the season. Um, he will provide depth. Hopefully, Caldara will return. He'll get over his injury nightmare and he will form that partnership with Romagnoli that we're all waiting for. Uh, but Leo Duarte, solid addition. We lost Zapata and Abate. Uh, similarly, in midfield as well with the Krunic and Benacer signings, we lost a lot of players. Montalivo, Bertolacci, Jose Mari. Again, didn't play a lot, but... Those are depth numbers that we lost and we had to replace. So pretty happy with the signings that we've made. Still under just under two weeks to go until the transfer deadline in Italy. Expecting more movement, um, potentially more outgoings and incomings to be fair. But I think we're in a stronger position. We've got a stronger squad than we did last year. And let's just hope and wait and see if we can make that improvement with the players that have been brought in. So looking back at pre-season, opinion will differ on how, how important pre-season is. Uh, some will look at it and say that it's absolutely crucial, build confidence, build morale, build momentum. Uh, you want to see positive signs from the team going into the new season. And so far, it hasn't, you know, we haven't seen a great deal to be overly excited about. Others will say that it's merely just building fitness, getting to know each other, building a new chemistry in the team with the new players, the new coach. And quite frankly, there isn't really much to look at in the results. We lost to Bayern, Benfica, lost to United on penalties. We beat Ferran Kelly in Kosovo and there was a drab goalless draw with Cesena at the weekend. Again, you can look at it both ways. There were positives. I think you can take a lot away from the preseason games. Suso in the Treco Artista role, I thought he did exceptionally well at times and he impressed me. Uh, considering their question marks over his ability to even play that role and have a future at the club this summer, this summer and this season, uh, I thought he was a standout player. Um, Romagnoli was steady as ever. I thought Donnarumma was great. Uh, spoken about Hernandez in his short, brief appearance against Bayern. I thought he looked good. I thought Biglia looked good at times. And I think there were a couple of decent performances across the board from certain players at different times, but obviously weren't reflected in the results. And you can look back at it and think, slightly disappointing. But again, for me, pre-season personally is just about building fitness building that chemistry in the team and just being ready for the first game of the season. Uh, I quite honestly couldn't care less about the results, first and foremost, but it would have been nice to see a bit more consistency and a bit more in the performances, but I think we saw enough to see that Champalo's ideas are getting across to the players and we are making progress. So I think it was a, it was a positive progression and uh, performances across the board. All it counts on now is the performance against Udinese and we need to get off, off to a winning start, hopefully. Moving on to starting lineup versus Udinese, uh, in an ideal world we would see some of the summer signings and I think we would see hopefully some changes made but honestly I think the team that played Chisena is most likely going to be the one that we see this weekend. Um, Donnarumma in goal, I don't think that's under any sort of consideration. Rodriguez to get the nod at left back with Fernandez still injured and then Romagnoli and Masaccio in the middle with Calabria at right back. Conti hasn't played enough minutes over pre-season to, to get ahead of Calabria. And similarly, Leo Duarte arrived late and didn't get much playing time uh, after his arrival. So I expect Masakio to partner Romagnoli. Midfield, Cialnolu, Barini and Biglia played the majority of minutes over pre-season. So again, I would kind of expect that three to start in the midfield trio. Um, and then Suso obviously played as a Trek Artista throughout pre-season as well. So I fully expect him to continue in that role. Castellejo supported Piontek as well through pre-season um, and I kind of can't see any other way of Leao getting an immediate start from Gianpaolo so expect Castellejo who for me was bitterly disappointing through pre-season I wasn't impressed with him at all uh, yes you can say he worked hard for the team he's very good at the pressing aspects of Gianpaolo's style of play um, and he's got the energy to get around the pitch but he lacks the physicality to hold on to the ball to win the ball back and also he didn't show enough creativity and quality on the ball 
to emerge as sort of a creative spark behind Piontek um, and also as a, a direct threat himself on goal. So for me, Castellejo was the weak link through pre-season, but unfortunately, Liao hasn't had a much playing time. I can't imagine he's fully sort of integrated as of yet. Uh, so for me, Castellejo will probably get the nod beyond Piontek. Uh, moving ahead beyond this weekend and a sort of ideal starting eleven. It doesn't change a great deal. Uh, I think I'd like to see Caldara eventually partner Romagnoli as the defensive pair. Hernandez coming in at left back. Uh, Benacer replacing Biglia in the middle of the midfield trio. I think he's going to be, like I said, uh, a huge part of our success this season. Uh, and he'll set the tempo and the tone for the rest of the team. So the sooner he gets into the team, the better. Uh, Lucas Paqueta will probably come in for Chalnolu on the left of the three. Uh, Kessi on the right of the three instead of Barini, Suso to keep his place in the Treco Artista role, and then Leao to partner Piontek uh, as the two men up front. Just a quick word as well also on Bonaventura. I think he was very impressive in his brief performance against Ferran Kelly in pre-season. Uh, it was great to see him back from injury after the nightmare that he's been through last season. Uh, again, very early to say anything too substantial about the impact and the influence that he could have moving forward, but I do think that he's going to be a great addition and almost like a new signing for us this season so looking forward to seeing him get back on the pitch on a regular basis moving on to your comments and questions and the polls that i ran on twitter uh first off we've got bori oludemi at bori canes the transfer deadline is here in just a few weeks and we're in the negative financially won't financial fair play be an issue for this current year if we don't sell a high profile player what players would you say we should let go if we need to sell by the deadline in all honesty, I've kind of got to a point with the financial fair play situation where I don't see it as much of a concern as it's been made out to be. I think the decision to withdraw and agree that withdrawal with UEFA from the Europa League was a big decision. I think that gives us a massive sort of flexibility to our work this summer. I think the Catrone sale covers a significant part of our spending in terms of the spread of the financial costs across the financial years ahead. Um, and I think reflected in the signings of Hernandez, Benacer, Leao, uh, Duarte to an extent and Krunic, I think the price tags involved in those signings would suggest that it's not a major concern at this point for the management. So I don't think we need to sell a high-profile high player. A lot was said about Donnarumma's future with Paris Saint-Germain sniffing around for him. At one point, there was a terrible deal being touted involving Areola and money. That has gone very quiet. There is still murmurs that PSG are interested, but the majority of the reports about Donnarumma now would suggest that he is going to stay and uh, potentially even sign a renewal in September. So the kind of concerns over the financial fair play situation have gone away for me. I don't think we need to necessarily sell a high-profile player, but... In terms of players that I would say we should let go, uh, we're obviously overpacked at left back. I think Laxalt and Strinic will probably be the two to go. I would probably prefer to get rid of Rodriguez because I'm not sure how he would be happy with be playing second string to Hernandez this season uh, with his wage and sort of limitations that I touched upon earlier. I think I'd probably prefer to see him leave, but. The expectation is that Laxalt and Strinic will be the two to go. And then, of course, a lot has been said, loads of speculation over Angel Correa this summer. For me, he is the ideal support striker for Piontek. I think he's got everything that Gian Paolo looks in for a player in that role to kind of be the perfect fit. So he's going to be the priority, which in that case, hopefully Castillejo for me will be the first to go. But whether or not the interest is there to make that happen is up for debate. Um, and then Andre Silva would probably be the alternative. I think it's a lot's been said about his future as well. And I think if a deal can be done for him to move on, then he would obviously be the natural sort of sacrifice to make space for Correa. Bori also says, also given the preseason and new style of play, how do you feel about it? It doesn't look like it produces a lot of goals. Defence seems solid as usual. Yeah, agreed. I think the defence has looked good. Uh, I don't think we've looked completely sort of outplayed at any point in any of the preseason games. We've looked organised, we've, like I said, we've pressed with intensity and urgency and energy off the ball, which has been a big change. Um, so that's going to help us stay organised and stay really hard to break down. In terms of the lack of goals, yes, it is a concern. But again, I think that is probably more to do with Jean Paolo still working with the players in pre-season and trying to improve that aspect of their game. I think that will come in time. A lot's been said about Biontech's lack of goals. Again, I'm not worried. I do think as soon as the season starts, 
he will get back to his goal scoring ways. He'll find his goal scoring touch and will be fine. Is there enough goals in the team? That's one for debate. I think Paqueta, Chalanolu, Kessi, Leao, Suso are all going to have to chip in. I think Piontek will get his, let's say, fifth, around 15 to 20 goals this season in Serie A. But then the others have got to chip in as well to make sure that we kind of cement our place in the top four. Uh, and I think I do think there's plenty of goals in the team uh, and I think they will come in time. So for me, not a massive concern yet, but I completely agree with you based on pre-season. Uh, we haven't looked the most sort of prolific in front of goal yet, so we'll have to wait and see on that one. Uh, Bradley Watson at Spidey0816. Uh, I won't start worrying till we are a few games and we are a few games in and we are still struggling. I believe with the right midfield starting, we'll, we'll get it going. Uh, especially with a better support striker with Piontek. Can't wait for the true discussions and listening to your thoughts. Bradley, absolute pleasure always talking to you with you on Twitter and uh, looking forward to many more discussions this season. Uh, but yeah, completely agree with your point. Um, I think we do need to give it a few games just to see how everything beds in. Uh, Gian Paolo does need patience and time to get his ideas perfectly across and there's a sense of fluency in the way that we're playing. I think that will come with time. Um, this most suitable support striker, i.e. Correa, to partner Piontek was going to be absolutely crucial. So hopefully that deal gets done before the uh, transfer deadline passes in a couple of weeks' time. At Samir Mohammed 72 uh, welcome back, boss. Thank you, Samir. Very pleased to be back. Uh, starting lineup you asked for, just kind of been through most of it uh, in terms of what I expect on the opening day and my ideal starting 11. Hopefully we'll see that ideal starting 11 sooner rather than later, but if you disagree, uh, please leave your comments below and let me know how you think we should ultimately line up this season when everybody's fit and uh, raring to go. Uh, Pre-season, so far so good, but need to see more of Jean Paolo ball. And Samir also adds that he, we're getting third, none of that fourth place BS. Very positive. I like it. Optimistic. Uh, we'll go through a lot of the predictions in the top four in a minute, but I would probably say fourth place is the expectation for me. Uh, I'm not sure we're going to get top three, but that fourth place is there for, for the taking, in my opinion, this season. And uh, hopefully we've made the appropriate changes to go that last step and get that fourth place this time around. Uh, at the Milanisti 11, going to be a good season, I think, if we provide Giampaolo with a support striker. Again, completely agree with that point. Uh, Mercato has been good. Better to take time over signings and get the right players than rushing into deals. Giampaolo has already raised the level of play a lot. Need a partner to Piontek Correa, it seems, though. I'm thinking right now we'll finish fourth. Could potentially see us finishing higher, depending on the Mercato's end. Big thing, get that support striker in, do that, and we finally have no squad holes whatsoever. Last season, we didn't give Reno a left winger. This year, we need to give Marco Giampaolo a support striker, a second striker. Again, Joe, completely agree with your points. Uh, yeah, maybe half and half, I think, with the signings. I think I'd prefer to see them all arrive a lot earlier than they did, in fairness. I think a lot of them haven't played a great deal over preseason. That's not going to be good for fitness, and it's not going to be good for getting used to Giampaolo's demands and ideas. So that's going to probably take a little bit longer for them to get integrated and hence why we might not see a lot of them start or even feature at all against Udinese on the weekend. So possibly probably would have preferred to see more of the signings made earlier in the summer. But agree with you that Giampaolo has raised the level already uh, and Correa or an idea, as an ideal sports striker, second striker, Correa seems to be the right man for the job. Uh, again, finish fourth but potentially higher depending on the, the rest of the business that we do in the summer. Um, but yeah, we'll have to wait and see. Like I said as well, the left winger, we knew that going into the season that that was going to be an issue, that we didn't address it last summer. Hands were tied, to be fair, to an extent in terms of what we did bring in and perhaps time ran out uh, to bring in that left winger. But let's not make the same mistake again. Let's address it and let's hopefully bring in that second striker this time around. OK, moving on to the polls from yesterday. The first one, of course, was the biggie. Uh, Will Milan finish in the top four this season? And 77% of the 132 votes posted said yes, 23% said no. Uh, Bori said, I think we can get top four, but mainly because we don't have the Europa League distraction. 100% agree with that, good point. Moz at Mr. GL, although Juve, Inter and Napoli have strengthened their squads considerably, I still feel like Atalanta is beatable and we can finish better than this season uh, with a more experienced and tactically savvy coach. Mars completely echo your points there. I think Atalanta are the team, obviously, that I believe will drop out as well. They're going to have the Champions League to think about, of course, on top of that in the early part of the season. Um, and I feel as though we've made the adjustments and the improvements 
to kind of make that step up above them and also fend off the likes of Roma and Lazio behind us. So, yeah, completely agree with your points there. Uh, Sven Simonson at Sven Sim N. Milan will finish fourth. I think El Shirawi and Manolas is a big loss and Roma fans will admit. Lazio is always too high in the predictions before the season starts. And Atlanta don't have the squad for both Europe and domestic games. Sven, stole your thunder there, to be honest. Uh, yeah, agreed with that on all three fronts. I think those are the three teams that we will finish above. Um, and then it's just a case of can we break into the top three on top of that. I'll be happy with fourth, I think, this, this time around. Dean Darko at Darko1603 isn't particularly positive about what's to come. He says we have a mediocre squad and a loser's mentality. Dean, unfortunately, I'm going to have to disagree with you, but... Only time will tell whether or not this team does have what, what it takes to get the top four. Um, second poll, Gian Paolo, confident that he will not only get results, but also successfully implement his style of play with the players at his disposal. Again, everyone's feeling very optimistic and very positive before the season starts. 82% of you said yes, that he will get the style of play across as well as the results. 18% said no. Um, at Milan underscore Carbitan, it's been a long time since we saw Milan play good football. I hope it works. Good football and results. Yep, that's exactly what we want. We want the combination of the two. Uh, and Gianpaolo seems to be the man best placed, if you like, to do that. So, fingers crossed, he can do. But obviously, the results will dictate that to an extent. If he makes a poor start to the season, will we see him kind of abandon that those principles and that style of play that he's worked hard on in previous jobs? Or will he stick to his guns and continue to go with it until he gets it right? That's going to be the big test at this level as well. The pressure will be on him, so we'll have to wait and see what, what kind of uh, resolve he shows in that regard. And then finally, the last poll was signings of the new arrivals. Who's your favourite addition will be most influential this season? 62% of you said Benacer, 9% went with Liao, 26% went with Hernandez, and 4% went with Leo Duarte. Uh, Krunic was an option as a comment, but unfortunately it looks like he didn't get much backing, but fingers crossed he can also have an impact. At Joe for Milan, Benacer for him. He'll be the best regista we've had since Pirlo and Mark van Bommel. The Algerian will fit right in, already has Serie A experience and is approaching the peak of his potentials. Our best buy so far until the others prove themselves. Theo Hernandez is great and a close second. Difficult to disagree with that. Again, like I said earlier, Bernacere seems to be the man for me as well. I think he's going to be the most influential addition. And yeah, let's hope and see that he meets those expectations uh, and exceeds them even. So that'll be a big plus for us this year. Uh, Lucas says, although I rate Ricardo Rodriguez as a decent left back, he is far too conservative. Could not agree with that more. Hernandez will have his defects and errors, but will contribute far more attacking-wise. The combination of his pace and skills will have a huge influence in how we play and look as a team. Lucas, nail on head. Absolutely spot on. Couldn't agree more. Uh, but yeah, I think if you're going to spend €20 million Euros on Hernandez, you'd expect him to be the starting left-back this season. Um, so hopefully we'll see a lot of that and less of Ricardo Rodriguez this season. And then finally, uh, I asked for your predictions for Milan's Player of the Year and Most Disappointing Player of the Year. And as a sort of wider branching question, I wanted to get an idea and a feel for what the feeling is towards who's going to win the Serie A this season and the top four in order. So let's roll through a bunch of your replies. Bori Olodemi, again, number one, Player of the Year, Hernandez. Good shout. Second, as in Most Disappointing Player, will be Hakan. Again, I've backed Hakan since the day he signed, I think. I think I've think i I've tried to back him even when he's come under serious criticism. Um, the, the excuses are running out now. I think this is either make or break for him this season. If he doesn't deliver and he isn't a key figure for us, it's going to be very difficult to kind of defend him and say he has a future with us and let's keep him on for another season. I think if he doesn't perform this season, next summer he may well be on his way out. So... Bori, if he's your most disappointing player of the year, this could well be Chalonolu's last 12 months with us, but we'll wait and see on that one. Uh, Bori's picked Juve for his champions, and his top four goes Juve, Napoli, Inter, and Milan. Uh, Samir Benacer for player of the year. Brilliant shout. Number two for most disappointing player of the year would be Leao. Again, I can see where you're coming from. It's going to be it's going to be a 50-50 whether or not he is capable of making an immediate impact we saw what happened with Andre Silva arrived with a lot of fanfare and a lot of expectation didn't deliver I'm not saying that they're 
either remotely the same kind of player, but it's the same kind of concept in the terms of him making that switch to a new culture, a new team, a new country, a new league. Is he going to adapt? We'll have to wait and see. Uh, Samir's gone with Napoli to win Serie A and Napoli, Juve, Inter and then Milan in fourth for him. Moz, Suso, player of the year. Uh, Musacchio, most disappointing player of the year. Uh, yeah, if, I'm hoping that he doesn't play enough to warrant that award, but we'll have to wait and see. But yeah, Suso's a good shout from what we've seen in pre-season. Uh, he looks good and he may well be one of our most important players yet again if he doesn't move before the deadline. Moz has actually gone with Inter to win Serie A this season, which would be an absolute disaster. What are you doing, Moz? We can't see, we can't, hopefully can't see that happen. Uh, top four will go Inter, Juve, Napoli, Milan. Uh, and he's also added a fifth. Best summer signing is Leao. Uh, yeah, well, we'll see. Again, like I said, we'll have to wait and see whether or not he produces the goods. But big shout on Inter winning it. Hopefully not. But Conte, X Factor, we never know with him. He's, uh, he's going to make a massive difference. I think they've bought very well. Uh, and I certainly do believe that they'll be up there challenging Juve and Napoli for the title this season. Ahmad says Romagnoli for player of the year. Couldn't, yeah, it's a good shout as well. I think he's shown the same steadiness and consistency in preseason that we've come to expect now. He's just an absolutely exceptional player. Uh, whether or not he gets the amount of credit that he deserves is irrelevant for me. I'd rather him go under the radar and continue to be our captain for as long as possible. Um, and Ahmad says that Piontek could very well be the most disappointing player of the year. Based on preseason, that is not a bad shout, but hopefully he finds his uh, goal scoring touch sooner rather than later. Uh, Nino L says Piontek for player of the year and Castellejo for most disappointing. Again, very feasible, can see that happening. He's gone with Napoli to win the title and then Napoli, Juve, Milan in third and Inter fourth. Uh, so again, the general consensus has been uh, fourth place for Milan, but Nino L is confident that we can break into the top three, which would be an absolute treat especially finishing above Inter. That would be very nice. Um, Ajit Afriandi, player of the year, Jack. If he could play all season long, that would be an absolute joy if he could. I uh, would love to see Bonaventura back in the team on a regular basis, doing what he does best. Um, it would be yeah, That would be a great story in itself to see him come back and do well for us. Most disappointing, maybe Andre Silva, Piontek, Hakan or Castellejo. Probably disagree with you on Piontek. I do still feel as though he'll come good and he will get goals again this season. But the other three choices that you've said there, 100% see where you're coming from. Silva may well be out the door before then, but if he does stay, he could very well be one of the most disappointing. And pressure's on Chalnolu as well. And again, like I said, Castellejo, not been impressed with him in pre-season, so who knows what we'll get from him. Uh, Serie A champions... Ajit says, we will win it if Gianpaolo could release the beast of Piontek and synergise in the important role of Paqueta and Suso in the attacking line. That is a massive shout. Uh, I'm going to admit and say that I don't see us challenging for the title whatsoever. But I love your optimism and your positivity. You are 100% right in what you say. If Piontek fires and Paqueta and, Paqueta and Suso are at their best on a consistent basis, then you're looking at a very, very dangerous trio there who could really push us on and get us into that top three bracket. Whether or not it's going to be enough to get into the top place, hey, let's not rule it out. But yeah, I feel for me personally, I feel that's going to be difficult. But like I said, I love your optimism. Uh, Sir Kevo's gone for Romagnoli as his player of the year. Prefer not to speak on his disappointing player of the year. Fair enough. Uh, Pidiamonte Calcio are going to win the title. Yes, the FIFA boys, they're going to win the title this season. Uh, Napoli second, Inter third, Milan fourth. So again, that kind of seems to be the general consensus, perhaps with Napoli and Pidiamonte Calcio swapping places. Uh, Joseph Bacciolieri says, Bacchetta as player of the year and Donnarumma, uh, most disappointing player of the year, more due to the fact that there are lower expectations on this team. So I'm basing this on the fact that Milan's highest paid player is a 20-year-old goalkeeper uh, and his production is not worth the money. Fair enough. That's Everybody's got an opinion. That's absolutely fine. I think he's already kind of, for me, he's shown a lot of positives in the way that he's ignored the speculation over his future and gone through pre-season, showing a better concentration, cutting those mistakes out, and he looks a little bit more confident in possession as well, playing it out from the back. So I probably can't see that happening. But again, I, I do understand your argument. Uh, and so, yeah, we'll have, to, we'll have to wait and see. 
how that unfolds. And then Joe says Napoli are going to win the title. Juve second, Inter third, Milan fourth. Uh, at G Chinwanja says GGO for player of the year. Suso for most disappointing player of the year. And then Juve to finish top. Napoli, Inter and then Roma fourth. So no Champions League for Milan again this season. Fair enough. Again, I ask for your opinions and your realistic expectations. And uh, for you, if you think Roma are probably going to pip us to that fourth spot, then fair play. But... Obviously, fingers crossed they don't. Uh, we'll have to we'll have to see how that how that goes. Uh, at the Milanese eleven, Joe Player of the Year, Romagnoli for a third season in a row. Absolutely, why not? Uh, that's a very very good shout. He's been incredibly consistent and very very effective for us the last two years. I think the problem is still his partner, and hopefully that will change over the course of the season. But expecting another big year from Romagnoli. Most disappointing player, Andre Silva, if we fail to offload him. Again, understand that completely. Uh, Serie A champions, Napoli. Ancelotti to do a turn, and I think their squad is looking well decent. And top four would be Napoli, Juve, Inter, and then Milan. Uh, again, fair play. Again, a lot of people are saying Napoli to win it. For me, I'm going to have to give it to Juve just because I think the additions that they've made with De Ligt, uh, Ramsey and Rabio on free transfers and you've got Ronaldo still there they've kept Dybala I just feel as though they've still got too much even though Sarri's come in obviously and his track record isn't great in Italy but for me I think they'll probably still edge it they've still got the quality and the strength and depth to get the top place but I would probably say Juve Napoli second into third and then Milan fourth Fourth is the minimum expectation, and if we can kick on from that point, that would be absolutely lovely, but we'll see. Uh, and then Uncommon adds Benacer for Player of the Year. Great shout. I think he's going to be a big, big player for us this year, uh, and lacks out as most disappointing player. Again, depends on whether or not he's still at the club before the deadline. There's a lot of talk that he's on his way out, so may well not be around to, to be in contention for that award, if you like, but I completely see where you're coming from. And then... It, for him, Juve, Milan, Napoli, and then Inter. So Milan's second, very optimistic, very positive. I like it. I like where you're coming from. Uh, if it happens, fantastic. But again, for me, I think Milan, fourth spot, ahead of Atalanta, Roma, and, and Lazio, just in behind Inter, Napoli, and Juve. Uh, and yeah, we'll have to wait and see. Player of the season, and most disappointing player of the season, I think the general consensus is there. There's a lot of similar names coming up. Uh, it's up for grabs, isn't it? It could be anyone, but... Uh, as long as uh, we achieve our objectives as a collective, I'll be more than happy. Right, guys, that's a wrap for this week. Thank you very much for all your feedback this week on Twitter. I really do appreciate it. I know I've been gone away for a while, so to come back and still get the great conversations, the great opinions, uh, and all the feedback and the votes on Twitter, it's, it means a lot, to be honest. It is, it's been frustrating that I haven't been able to keep up with the pod, but I'm aiming to make sure it continues this season. Uh, and obviously having that kind of support and the interactions with you uh, is a big thing and a, a massive reason to, to for me to continue doing it. So thank you very much for that. Please leave your comments and your opinions in the comments below. Uh, subscribe if you haven't already. Share the video. Tell your friends. Tell your family. Uh, and yeah, let's hope for a big season this year. We went through a lot of difficulties again last time around. Um, new era, new manager, new players new management let's hope it all gels we get top back into the top four and then build on from that i think i'd be more than happy if we just sneak into the top four this season break that duck of not being in the top table at europe uh, and just build from there from then on patience and time will be needed i feel got to give jean a bit of time to get things right but from what i've seen in pre-season i do feel as though we're on the right track and there are hopefully better times to come Check out the website, milantalk.com, for daily content from me. You'll see lots more reaction and uh, previews and all sorts of analysis on there. I'll be back with the pod on the weekend to react to the Udinese result. Fingers crossed, a big three points to start the season. Uh, but until then, Forza Milan and thanks for listening.